Hello everyone, this is the second week of my devlog of an arcade game placed in the Stardust Fantasy World. So this one is a mixed bag of experiments with other application, Godot plugins and many many improvements to my Biome Generation system. There was a little bit of success and a lot of failures, but overall I think I learned a lot. So without further ado, let's begin. It's Monday and I decided to continue to work on my temple and I just finished watching this uh, mini series about trim sheets so basically those are just those textures that you place on your model everywhere and the one problem I encountered was that I don't have access to Substance Painter so I found this channel and this guy, Alexander Kirianov, uh, made a lot of really great tutorials about a uh, free alternative to Substance Painter named Armor Paint and I will try to use it. It's Tuesday and I continue to work on my trim sheets and this is the current result. Well, it doesn't look so good, so it's supposed to look something like, like that. And uh, as you can see, there is not enough details, so when I enable this one on the bottom so this is how it's supposed to look and uh, I'm not sure about it right now so in the meantime I thought that I will uh, continue to look at some other cool uh, effects in Godot so uh, I think about adding some fog and uh, maybe take a look at some volumetric fog plugins so yeah it's 10 and i just finished testing this amazing plugin again by si silicon uh, for volumetric fog and as you can see i just added a little quick example here is the near the temple and uh, another one it's in the middle of the forest and I think that it looks really really cool so I'm thinking if it should stay or maybe it will be as uh, you know as a setting so that you can enable it without any performance costs okay so it's Wednesday and I just started working on some optimizations and as you can see if my OBS was working correctly uh, we have around 100 FPS right now so basically what I done is I uh, increased the chunk size of my biomes so currently they are above 100 squares and uh, I used my LOD plugin uh, and I mm, changed those trees with my with imposters generated with my octahedral imposters plugin so yeah it's uh, pretty nice right now so I was playing around with some optimization of my plugin and I noticed this strange thing so basically you can see that this grass right here shouldn't be near this tree uh, or more to be more precise this imposter tree and if you look at my beyond graph you can clearly see that that grass is only on a LOD 0 but tree is an uh, LOD 2 uh, I mean imposter so there should be a space of one LOD and it's around 250 squares so uh, 
Yeah, and I think that I found the culprit. So what I did before was that I didn't have this line right here. And, uh, you know, and I calculated the position or difference between position of a player and the current chunk uh, between its starts and not its center. So if I play it right now, as you can see, uh, the effect is not clearly visible anymore. And uh, if you look closely, there is a um, visible space where the grass ends and where the impostors begins. So I was working uh, a little bit more on my plugin and I just found another bug. So do you see it? Yeah, it's over here. So the, the system probably didn't really work so well as I thought. Well, uh, we will see what it can give us in uh, performance wise. You probably didn't notice before because of magic of editing, but you could actually go through those trees. So the next big thing I added to my biome graph is ability to place your collision on meshes or on subsets. So basically you select your collision shape as your mesh, you place it in a subset and you generate your render and then when you play it it should work. It's Thursday and I continue to work on my trim sheets and as you can see the effect is much better than before so I redone everything from the scratch and the one important thing that I noticed um, after the Tuesday experiments is that uh, you need to blend an ambient occlusion map um, <clears throat> for um, and diff with a diffuse texture to achieve this uh, depth of, uh, of object so what I've done is that I model this two high poly uh, decorations and then I created in armor paint um, two textures so the first one is a curved texture as you can see uh, the white spots are curves on our objects and the second texture I baked uh, you can bake it from here yeah so the, the second one is an ambient occlusion and as you can see it's darker on the front it's lighter on the top on the uh, bottom and uh, I created this simple material which just maps two colors and based on uh, based on uh, your curvature it will change the color and I also use an ambient occlusion to lighten the material so this is the effect I think uh, will look good uh, in my game so we will see I will try to uh, done uh, the rest of it so I was experiencing a little bit uh, problem with my collision detection system uh, and what I did is that I uh, each iteration of my chunk uh, system I just deleted all static bodies with all collision shapes in it and recreated it based on the um, instance multi instance mesh and uh, I just uh, probed the position of each instance and added uh, transform to new shape and uh, this caused problems with performance and where and, and where the glitches like you know stuttering uh, so what I did instead is I 
uh, only creates the static body with uh, collision shapes uh, and uh, the maximum number of each subset so that when I run actual chunk with a uh, density uh, I just check if uh, instant count is smaller uh, than our number of collision meshes shapes and then if it is I change the transform of my collision shape if it isn't I just disable this collision so I have a pool of collision shapes uh, instead of recreating and re-adding nodes to Godot and it seems a lot more stable it's Friday already and I didn't have much time today to work on my game but I heard that everyone loved my game design especially character design <laughs> so I found that this website character generator from Autodesk uh, allow you to easily generate your model and then <clears throat> I generated this one and then I bring it to Mixamo to rig it and animate and I imported it into Godot and it's looking like that right now so of course it doesn't really fit uh, style of my game mm, but maybe with some uh, a little of changes in Blender uh, it will be a lot better Okay, so it's Saturday and I just finished fingering with my GI probe in scene and uh, as you can see it looks pretty okay but the weird thing is that when I look at my vegetation the FPS drops to 30s so I wouldn't call it usable right now and uh, I'm not really sure what to do next because when I just g add GA prop to this uh, section where there is a temple and the statues, uh, then there is this visible border between uh, GI prop section and uh, just direct lightning and uh, it doesn't look good so probably I will just disable this and wait for Godot 4.0 with its uh, better global illumination and that's all for this week so I think this one was mostly about improvements in code and some plugins and Godot setting tests Overall, I think that the biggest success was a better performance and ability to add collision to Biome system. In the next week, I will try to create a Trello board and further development plan so that my future actions are better defined. As always, if you have any suggestions or questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.